Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, it would be a, maybe a nice quick video. We're going to look at how to do tests using Microsoft Excel on a single population proportion. So this is going to be uh, somewhat different from how we did the tests on single population means. When we did the test on means, there was a simple command in Excel for either a Z test or a T test that gave us probabilities. From that, we got P values and test statistics, etc. Single population proportion, a little bit different. Excel does not have a simple tool um, built in to do this kind of test. So let's just go through a quick little discussion here and then we'll, we'll jump into the Excel file. So once again, remember we have three different types of tests available. I'll just write this down briefly so that we can get into the Excel discussion. We have either uh, lower tail tests, we have uh, two tail tests, and we have upper tail test. Okay, same options, same types of tests that we had when we were looking at single population um, means. Now, when we're using Excel, Excel doesn't have a simple command. What we're going to have to do is actually calculate our test statistic. Uh, I'll say manually, but I don't mean by picking up a calculator and doing it like this. We'll still use Excel, but we're going to have to input the formula to obtain that test statistic. So it's the sample proportion minus our hypothesized proportion, which is what we would have here in that test divided by the standard error, which is going to look like this one minus divided by that sample size. So we can either do this by hand, but if your instructor is anything like me, probably they prefer you to use Excel so that you get some practice, you get accustomed to working in that environment. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a simple, simple sample of yes, no responses. So again, in these videos, I'm really just focusing on the Excel discussion. I'm not focusing at all on the problem, on the context, on interpretation. I'm not doing anything like that. We've talked about that in other videos with my workbooks. Here, we're just looking at how to get the results. So I've got a sample of yes, no responses to some question. So what we're going to need to do is calculate all of the pieces of that um, Z test formula. So what I need is my number of yes responses. I need my number of observations so that I can get my sample proportion. So let's say I want to know, you know, how many people said yes. I'm going to use the command again. I start always with the equal sign count if, and then I'm going to open that up and it's asking me for two pieces of information two um, two arguments, the range and the criteria. So the range, where do you want it to look for this response? I want it to look within my sample here. So it's going to look within that sample. And I'm going to press comma and I want it to look for a Y. Now, because I'm asking it to look for a text value, not a number, I need to put those quotation marks around it. So there it's going to look in that range and it's going to count how many Y's I have. So there's 12. Now I want to know what is that as a proportion of the sample. So here I'm going to get my sample size. I'm going to use another count command. Here I'm going to use count A. And what this does is it counts all of the cells that contain a value. So it ignores empty cells. The reason I'm using count A instead of just count is because count just counts the cells that contain a number. I want it to look for a, a, a letter, not a number. So I'm using the count a command. Oops. And now I highlight all of this and it's just going to count how many cells contain a value. 
in this case a letter, so there's 36. So my sample proportion is equal to, again, I'll always start with the equal to, 12 divided by 36. So there's my sample proportion. So that's my p-bar. So if I come back here, my p-bar is 0 0.33. Now, for the sake of a discussion, for the sake of the example, again, I don't have a, a, a specific problem that I'm working on. Let's assume that we have a hypothesized value, let's say of 0.4. So, and again, I don't know what kind of test I'm doing here yet. We'll talk about that again later. So I have a hypothesized value of 0.4. And so now we need to calculate all of this stuff, all of this stuff that's underneath um, in that division, that standard error. So this, if we were doing this manually with a calculator, would be 0.4 times one minus 0.4 divided by n. Now n is our total sample size, which we just calculated to be 36. Now we're gonna do this in Excel. So here I'm gonna say, okay, here's my Z, uh, my Z score, my test statistic. Now this can be tricky we might have to follow closely. I'm not, I won't be surprised if I make a mistake and have to go back and tweak things. That first thing I want in the numerator is my sample proportion minus my hypothesized value. I'm going to open a bracket because using brackets makes sure Excel uses the proper order of operations. So there's my sample proportion minus my hypothesized value was 0.4. Close a bracket. So there's my numerator divided by, now that denominator is a little bit tricky. I'm going to open a bracket. That's going to be square root SQRT. Open another bracket. That's my hypothesized value, 0 0.4 times, open another bracket, 1 minus my hypothesized value, 0 0.4 close that bracket, close the next bracket. Now I need to divide by that sample size 36 and close that final bracket. Now we can hopefully see I've got in the denominator one, two, three brackets opening and one, two, three brackets closing. And there we go. Something about that doesn't feel right to me. It's this bracket here. There we go. That's better. So let's come back up here and take a look at this. This is a little bit tedious. This is where having those commands in the descriptive uh, in, in the data analysis tool um, will become very helpful in future tests. This one here, I've input that formula, my point estimate minus my hypothesized value divided by this is that standard error. So everything in here is inside of that square root sign. You can see the brackets are color coded. So this is the 0.4 times a one minus 0.4. Divide that by my sample size. That's all in the red brackets. So that's all within the square root, which is what we want. We want all of those multiplications and that division all within the square root. And so that's correct. And then that final bracket simply closes off my denominator. Good. Okay. So now we have a test statistic equal to negative 0.82. So if we come back here, let's see, I have a distribution like this. Oh, that's kind of messy. That's okay. I have a test statistic of negative 0.82. Okay, now, the next thing that you probably need for your assignment or for your practice problem is a p-value. 
And as we've talked about before, the p-value depends on what kind of test you're doing. If I'm doing an upper tail test, then this region here would be my p-value. If I'm doing a lower tail test, this region here would be my p-value. If I'm doing a two tail test, it's going to be this region here multiplied by two. So it depends what kind of test we're doing. And again, in this video, I'm focusing on getting results from Excel. I'm not focusing on interpretation or anything like this. I have no context. So I'll just show you how to get all three of those probabilities, only one of which is the p-value for your particular problem. Okay, so we come back into Excel. There's my test statistic. Now, I need a probability. Here I'm going to use the command equal norm.est.dist. And here that's asking me for a z value. There we go. There's my z value. Cumulative, this is asking whether I want to use a cumulative density function or the probability density function. A discussion on the difference between those two is a little bit outside of the scope of this video. Here, just take my word for it, you're going to say true. I want the cumulative density function. And there we go, that gives me a probability. Now, is that a lower tail, upper tail, or a two tail probability? Well, here we can click through this and we can go through some of the, the help as we have talked about in previous videos. This is a lower tail probability, 0.21. I know that partly because when I look at that test statistic, I see it's negative 0.82. And so if I come in to look at that distribution, I ask myself, well, is that this region here or is it this region here? Well, that red region is certainly less than 0.5, right? Because the area under that curve is equal to 1. If I split it in half right here, I know that this half the area under that curve is 0.5, this half, the area under that curve is 0.5. So if that command is giving me a result of 0.21, then it must therefore be this region here, 0.21. So that's giving me a lower tail value. So let's put in a label here for that lower tail. If I'm doing a lower tail test, there's my p-value, done. I don't have to do anything else. If I'm doing an upper tail test, well then I need that right hand side, the upper portion of the distribution. That's equal to one minus the lower tail. If I'm doing a two tail test, I need to multiply one of those by two, which one, always the smaller of the two, equals two times that 0.21, and there we go. More than you need. I say that because here I've got three probabilities, and for any particular test that you're doing, you only need one of those probabilities. So the tricky part on doing these tests on proportions is this part here, getting that test statistic, because what I have entered up top here is this formula for that test statistic. And it can be a little bit tedious. And as you see, I even made a little mistake with the brackets. It's very, very easy to make those mistakes with the brackets. Make sure that you trace it through. Make sure that all of the calculations are being done in the right order. Once you've got that test statistic, then you can go ahead and get the appropriate probability for your test. Lower tail, if I'm doing a lower tail test, that's my p-value. If I'm doing an upper tail test, that's my p-value. If I'm doing a two tail test, that one's my p-value. 
Okay, so that's it. That's our single population test on a proportion. I hope that that was helpful. Um, and that's about it now for the single population um, analysis. We'll move on in the next videos to looking at two populations. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that that was helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.